I mean, um, it's, it's certainly access access to labor is certainly one of the biggest uh, things of, uh, which are relevant for, for an operator and also for uh, if, if things get become more and more sophisticated over time, uh, uh, that would be even more uh, the access to more, uh, let's say, even more professional, educated people in this respect. Um, but then automatization is obviously a big issue as well, and uh, we see that already since a, a little while, all those uh, full automated parcel hubs uh, in place, which then would have an effect on less demand for for employees, of course. But um, and I think, but that, that that is that that there have been so many disruptive trends, perhaps, which are perhaps on the horizon, which could have an impact on the market at one point. And uh, so we've probably seen over a period of five to ten years what that really means. And uh, but I think this electric. Uh, the electric cars are certainly something which, which would certainly help to make that case pro logistics operators because I think over the past couple of months or so there have been quite a few. Just I think last week, London Mayor uh, announced that they actually want to ban heavy goods vehicles outside London to some extent. So I think this is this is certainly something which is a uh, makes life more complicated for some. And if you look at places like Paris or Oslo, which have been around to make pedestrianise much more areas. And uh, electricity certainly would have that argument uh, uh, be softened that you talk about extra pollution and, and you know, health issues as well. But I would like to share one point about the automation in general. Um, there's a lot happening, of course, in innovations. And when you look at Amazon, for instance, at Kiva, but that's mostly the bigger players. And please note that there is a huge chunk of online retailers, which are medium-sized and smaller retailers. And those smaller and medium-sized retailers still invest heavily in just employees. And why is that? Because they, as a young sector, they're still, let's say, developing themselves, and they don't want to lock themselves in, in a big technological investment, which get outdated, let's say, the next day, because the market is moving that quickly. So that's reason number one. And the second reason is, and that's not a challenge the e-commerce sector has, is the significant differences in peak times. So when they have a big, let's say, robotics installation during the summer, it's, let's say, it's almost doing nothing. But well, in the winter, it's, it, it can't cope with all the orders. And therefore, they prefer a lot of smaller and medium-sized retailers just to hire people to, to adapt to these peaks. Tim, you wanted to pick something? Yeah, I was going to say, I think a, a separate issue and, and something that, uh, that uh, certainly Rennie touched on is, is the returns. And I, th I think that is, you will see more and more um, companies actually having separate um, warehouses to deal with returns, which will be very much labor intensive. So I don't think they will be in your traditional fulfillment. I think they will separate out. I think if you look at what Amazon are doing at the moment, they've actually built the first uh, returns warehouse, which is completely different to their e-commerce. Uh, facilities. So another issue is facing us. 